this weekend the Hellboy reboot hit theaters, that means today I'm gonna stop and rank all three theatrically released Hellboy movies from the worst to the best. Hi, right, if you're new here, my name is Sean Chandler, and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of the Hellboy movies. Which ones do you love, which ones do you hate, and everything in between. Given the response to the latest film, that should be a nice, lively discussion. As a point of reference, I only watched the Guillermo del Toro films for the first time in the last two weeks, so I'm going into this without any kind of biases, preconceived notions, nostalgia, any of that fun stuff. Just a fresh new take on all three of these films. With that said, let's get started. Coming in in last place is Hellboy 2019. This is a messy, nasty, ultra-violent retelling of the Hellboy story. There's nothing not a lot of creativity in the mix here, but I gotta say, I wasn't bored by it. It was never dull for me. This movie just kind of goes for it. The mythology is absolutely insane. From the very opening of the movie, you're like, okay, they are going full on bonkers with this movie. And that holds true until the very end of the film. There's not any long pauses between action sequences. All of the action sequences are extraordinarily violent. I, like, as I was watching it, the movie that came to mind, and maybe I'm crazy for thinking this, but was Punisher Warzone. That was like the closest point of reference, Punisher's Warzone, except with demons. Now, with that said, the story here is pretty incoherent. They keep starting storylines, and then they just kind of end them. There's this whole thing set up about Hellboy being betrayed by some people, and then it just ends. And then they set up another story over here about giants, and then it just ends. And it keeps doing that throughout the entire film, so it's not a particularly compelling story. There's a lot of stuff here that doesn't work very well. The special effects are incredibly hit or miss. Some of them look awful, and some of them look pretty good. So this is a movie that a lot of people aren't going to like. For me... There's enough ultra-violent, gory schlock for me to get inter entertainment out of it. So I didn't hate the movie at all. So I'm actually kind of surprised at how many people are saying, it, saying it's the worst movie they've seen all year. It's not good. I'm not quite sure it's the worst of the year. And there's certainly, there's things in here to keep you engaged. So I kind of got a kick out of it, even though it's certainly not a good movie. Our runner-up is Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. This is a very solid follow-up to the original film that was just kind of missing a couple things for me. It still has all the imagination when it comes to the creature designs, as well as the world, the environments that we're in, the setting, the atmosphere. It all has Del Toro's touch. You can tell this is one of his films just from because how interesting everything looks inside of the film. I also think this film has the strongest main villain of the entire franchise. He comes off more like a character than just a supervillain psycho that you get in a lot of comic book movies. Whether you're talking about he, the dynamic with his twin sister and how they share feelings and pain and things like that, or the simple fact of the matter that he's trying to tempt Hellboy over to his side by pointing out things that are true about Hellboy and how society rejects him. But one of the things I really enjoyed about the first film was Hellboy's interactions with his father and a bunch of the supporting cast. And by switching out half of the supporting cast going into this film kind of lost a little bit of something for me. This film also felt a good bit goofier to me than the first film. Right at the beginning of the film, we see Hellboy as a child, and the sequences and elements like that seem to push the film just a little bit too far into the campy category for me, and I wish they wouldn't have gone quite that far. Still, this is a very good follow-up to the original film with some great action, plenty of creativity to spare, just a couple missteps in but coming in in first place is the original Hellboy. This is a wildly creative and very weird addition to the genre. Del Toro just has an eye for creating unique, distinct creatures. Ron Perlman seems perfectly cast as this wisecracking, cranky demon superhero. He just fits this type of role so well. It is right in his wheelhouse, and you can tell he's having a lot of fun playing the role. Also, as wild and fantastical as this film can be, it's also very human. Hellboy's central story arc involves him pining over a girl. Even 
the humor inside of it is like weirdly specific. There's jokes about a guy getting hair plugs and things like that that just ground this otherwise wild film. And even beyond Del Toro's production design and the look of things, there's some nice world building going on here, whether you're talking about, of course, all the demon stuff that kind of comes along with the territory, but also the government cover up and their organization and Jeffrey Tambor's character. It's all really nicely constructed. And finally, as someone that loves origin stories, seeing this kind of first adventure that tells his backstory of how he came into this world just naturally resonated with me a little bit more. In general, this is a very unique and interesting addition to the genre, so it comes in at number one. Right over there, you can see a video where I give my picks for the 10 best superhero movies of all time. Remember to share your ranking down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.